Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from ExudeAutomation.com and welcome to our next video on Catalan Studio course. And in this video I'll be talking about working with web service testing in Catalan Studio 5.4 which is currently in beta stage and yet to release to the general public. And the feature that we're going to discuss today is going to be a new feature which is not yet released to the public and you are going to be the first guys who are going to see the first taste of what changes are going to come in Catalan Studio 5.4. All right, so let's get started. Catalan Web Service UI changes. So that's going to be the biggest change for this particular release, not in the functionality wise, but in the look and feel of the web services side. Catalan Studio supports web service testing for a pretty long time now, but there are new changes to UI coming pretty soon. If you are from Catalan Studio 5.3 and less, then you might have seen the Catalan Studio Web Services UI. Go and look something like this. It will have a URL that you can paste in and then you can do a get posts, delete and different kinds of command and you can set the parameters, you can set the authorization, HTTP header, HTTP body and response. And that's pretty straightforward UI and that's really, really intuitive and easy to use as well. But with the new release of the Catalan Studio Web Service UI change, the UI is going to look something like this. As you can see, the UI is pretty much how it looks like in the older UI, but just that the response has been modified a little bit. And also there are some noticeable changes. As you can see, if the parameter is going to be a get parameter, and if you have the query string, then the parameter is going to be added automatically for these kinds of URL. You can see the one and two is automatically added, whereas on the left hand side of the older version of Catalan, the parameter is not being added there. And similarly, you can see the response has the status of 200 OK and it has the elapsed time, size of bytes being sent and all those stuff. Kind of fancy, but that's really, really cool to see how Postman and other kind of application does things for us. Similarly, you have a header tab separately instead of just showing in as a tree view. And there is a pretty raw and preview options, which is used to view the response in a much intuitive way. Again, these are something which is available out of the box in the different tools like Postman, Fiddlers, etc. But yeah, Catalan has improved, at least in the UI department, to make sure that the UI is going to look pretty much like the third-party tools which is available. And you don't really have to go through those kinds of third-party tools for now. Script mode? Well, there is no change and the script mode is going to be looking pretty much exactly how it was working like before. So that's going to be remaining same there. So let's quickly talk about the web service server that we're going to use for our testing of the RESTful API this time for the demonstration purpose and understand how things work. So the MyJSON RESTful API server, a full fake REST API server with zero coding in less than 30 seconds. So this is the one which we're going to use for today's demonstration. And again, I'm not going to build a whole new RESTful API server to show you how things work. So I'm just going to choose this particular software which is available free online. I'm just going to use that and then I will show you how to work with Catalan Studio for RESTful API servers testing. So the installation of the server is going to be pretty much like this npm install hyphen g json server. That's it. So I'm going to install the json server in global scope of npm and you can start the json server something like this. You can see that it has a json hyphen server hyphen hyphen watch dot slash db dot json again the db dot json is a json file which has kind of a database structure which is used by the json server to parse us and show the information that we are looking for again that's a very very simple server we can just use that for our testing purpose so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work so for that i'm gonna flip to catalan studio so this is the catalan studio 3.4.0 and we're going to use this guy this time. And again, this is in beta stage. So we have some kind of bugs in this uh, particular release. At least if you want to see a noticeable bug, if you just go to the help and about, you can see the version it shows is actually 3.0.5, which is crazy because it is actually 5.4.0 that do in beta stage. But the version is currently not uh, what we're looking for. Uh, but it, this is the latest version as of now. And again, if you want to start creating a project, once again, we can go to the new project 
and you can see that I have already tried out the web service and it's working pretty much fine so that I don't really have to show you something which is not working so I'm just gonna show you how it works so we are going to do the API uh, web service testing and then I'm gonna hit OK so that's gonna create a new project for us there you go and then we're gonna create a new web service testing Again, for the new web service testing, the first thing we do is to create a new web service within our object repository, as like how we do for the mobile application as well as the web UI application. You can see there is a test object that we use. Similarly, for the web service, we need to use something called as web service request. So if you click this guy and let's say I'm going to do a get test and then I'm going to hit OK. So that's going to create a get test for me. And here I need to pass the URL. So the URL is nothing but the URL of our service that we're going to test. And again, the service is something that we need to create. And for that, as I said before, we're going to use the server, which I was talking about. So for that, I'm going to go to my Edge browser. And then I'm just going to search for my json server so this is the one you can see that the my json server is a fake online rest server for the teams that you can use so i'm just going to go over there and this is the one which i'm talking about and again for doing this you can either use the online version or you can create your own version so i'm just going to go to the try us server and you can see there is a source code available uh, for the database that we're going to create so you can see that this is the json file actually act as a database or the backend for the uh, web server so we can copy that but at the same time we can see how the json server look like so i'm going to go all the way to the json server how to install the json server as i already said the installation is very very simple all we have to do is this npm install hyphen g json server so that i can do directly by going to a command prompt and then I can just do npm install hyphen g json hyphen server. So that's going to install the json server for me. And once the server has been installed, I need to create the json database file so that I can make sure that my database server actually talks to that. So I'm just going to close this guy. And then I'm just going to go all the way to my C colon. And then I'm going to create a folder there and then I'm going to create this particular JSON file. So I have already created this db.json file and you can see that I have added some kind of stuff here like posts which has an ID, title and author. Similarly, there is an ID 2 of title as synonym with Java and author as Karthik, ID 3, title as Catalan Studio and author is Han. And similarly, I can create some comments, profiles and things of that nature. So these are something which I'm creating here for my server to consume and start running it so i'm just going to minimize this guy and then i'm going to go all the way to my powershell and then i'm going to start the server so again as i said to start the server we just have to use the command json hyphen server hyphen hyphen watch and the db.json so this is the command uh, that you have to use and the db.json file is something about this db.json file which is responsible for running the backends for the server so I'm just gonna hit enter and you can see that the file has been loaded this one and the server has started in this particular port number so if I just copy this oops oops I think I have terminated it and if I go to my edge browser and if I run this there we go you can see there is a fancy uh, post actually coming exactly from the file that I showed you this file right so this is actually post if you want to see the comments you can just type the comments and you can see there is a comments there similarly there are some other things that you can see whatever we have within the JSON file right so everything comes here so there is a profile so if you want to view the profile just go over here and hit enter so there is a profile right that's a super cool fake uh, json server which is available it's, we can use this for our web service testing so i'm just going to consume this and see how it works and if you want to read more about just go to the local host colon 3000 you can see it has a 
a very good option to show you whatever uh, request that we have in here for our testing purpose right so I'm just gonna consume this for our web service testing as I said I'm just gonna go to the Catalan studio over here and you can see I have already opened the older version as well to show you the differentiations so the, this is the new version we have and then I'm just gonna put this one and I'm just gonna save it uh, let's get this and see how it really works there we go you can see that whatever we saw on the browser it automatically brings for us similarly let's say if I want to get the ID of the post one so I'm just gonna put this hit run and hit OK you can see that I could see the first post similarly if I want to see the third post I'm just gonna save it and if I hit run you can see that it shows the third post for me that's really cool so it all works fine without any problem and that's the power of this particular server and that's the power of our new Catalan Studios UI as well and as I said if you want to uh, test with some other URLs something like this like post colon uh, post of the query string of ID is equal to 1 and ID of 2 so if I just run that you can see that 1 and 2 automatically appears and you can see that the ID is also appearing here so if you want to add one more ID you can just give that ID and you can give the 3 uh, hit save all right and if you run that it brings 1 2 3 here that's really cool so that's the power of our new version of Catalan studio and if you see the header it automatically shows the header information it shows the content length and all those stuff that's really cool so now we are going to verify if this testing that we're doing over here is actually valid in our test case so we can just verify that and see if how it really works so I'm just gonna remove these query strings for now and then I'm gonna go all the way to the test case hit add new test case so basically this actually tells that there is an object repository available for our uh, post testing purpose that we are doing here so basically these are posts that you can see here so if I run that it shows me all the different posts which is available in my website just fakely and if I want to effectively see that it is actually a get of all my posts so I can rename that maybe to get EA posts hit OK so that's the get request so I'm just gonna save it and then I'm gonna create a new test case this time and then I'm gonna add the name for the test case here so uh, verify simple rest service hit ok there you go and now we have to add the testing for this particular get ea post so i'm just going to hit add and then select the web service keyword here so that brings the keyword for us and here you have to specify what you're going to do basically we're going to send a request and the object that we're going to select is the get ea posts and then you can select the input and the expected output and the description for the test that you're going to perform. So basically the object that I'm going to pass in has some object parameter as well. So the parameter is nothing but uh, it's going to be a parameter, let's say, I'm just going to remove them. And the value is actually of number. Uh, let's say I want to select the third post that I have. So I'm going to select that and hit OK. And then also I need to verify if that value is actually uh, the one which I'm looking for. So if I go to the script mode, you can see that uh, we have a WS. WS stands for the web service uh, built-in keyword. And then there is a send request. which is going to send this particular request uh, using this particular object that we have. Again, this representation is pretty much exactly like how you identify an element in mobile as well as the web UI. So I'm just going to do this def of response. So this is going to be showing us the response and then we can do this ws of verify element property has a value from this response as uh, let's say the locator that we're looking for is actually the title. So uh, I'm just looking for the second element dot title. So you may be wondering why I'm doing this because you can see the third one stands for this one. So it's 0, 1 and 2. But the ID is actually 3 
but in the array that it returns is actually it's a second value so basically we have to verify this one as second as an array so this is going to be the second dot title so i'm just going to verify the title is actually catalan studio so i'm just going to copy this and then i'm just going to paste it over here oops i'm going to save it there we go that's the only changes i'm going to make here i'm just going to save it and then i'm going to run it so basically i'm going to verify if the value it returns is actually catalan studio and you can see that the test got passed without any problem so if you don't believe me what i'm doing here you can see that the verify element property value is successful so let's say uh, if i change this to maybe three if you think that that's the one which we're looking for if it's not a zero index so i'm just going to save it and then if i'm going to run this you can see that the, this time the test is going to fail and the reason is because the verify element property value is actually looking for Catalan Studio, but actually the value is null. So the verification is actually happening. That's the super cool power of our Catalan Studio. With a very, very simple line of code, we are verifying a very big thing in much easier fashion. That's really cool. And then we can do a post testing, something like this. So basically it is going to send a request for us uh, here with the git ea posts and then we're going to verify the response code is 200. Uh, that's it. So it's going to verify that and similarly if you want to verify the title has there is the total element count is 14 then I'm going to verify that as well. So let's quickly run this and see how these things are actually working. So basically you can see that we are doing various different kind of testing here many different operations and assertions and everything works in an instant of second so that's the power of Catalan studio api web service testing in much easier fashion and that's the real power of our fake service as well you can see that whatever that we are doing here it is actually running the service and it is serving the request and response that we are doing so basically i can put them side by side and if i run this you can see that it is actually running there right so that's it guys so this is the new change of the catalan studio on the web service area and we can see that the ui is really intuitive and it is really working fine as expected so once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day